All right, guys, starting things off like we always do, 16-bit console of choice, the Sega Genesis. I picked up quite a few games that I needed for the collection, and I'm getting this close, this close to finishing off my Genesis collection in terms of actually searching out individual titles. If I go to the flea market or one of my local stores and I see a game that I maybe wanted as a kid or good price, yeah, I'll pick it up. But as far as actual titles that I really, really wanted that I never got to get as a kid, very close. Almost 200 complete Genesis games, so it's getting this close, guys. So first off, Pirates of Dark Water. And I was a big fan of this cartoon as a kid. And I know there's two versions of this game. There's one on the Super Nintendo and one on the Genesis. The Super Nintendo is like a beat-em-up. Um, standard beat-em-up fare, cool game. But this Genesis version is kind of an action, adventure, 2D platformer, side-scroller action game. And I am quite fond of this game. The graphics are amazing. The storyline is really detailed, thought out, lots of uh, well-written script and kind of cinemas. And uh, the gameplay is excellent, great graphics, collision detection is spot on. When you swing that sword, you're hitting enemies spot on, you can throw them. Uh, great levels that are huge, pretty sprawling, it's not just left to right. So there's lots of cool, huge levels to explore. I can't say enough good things about this game. Uh, if you're looking for an action platformer, Pirates of Dark Water is fantastic. Next up is Boogerman, and I believe this is done by the same animation team as like Earthworm Jim. It looks very fluid just like Earthworm Jim did. And this kind of cashed in on like the early 90s, mid 90s, like gross factor with like burping and farting and, and all that kind of crude shit going on. But a really enjoyable game. Uh, once again, a side-scrolling platformer. Uh, Boogerman's a pretty cool character. It's not like super gross to where you're like, oh, what the hell is this? But it's, it's really enjoyable. I think the animation is super impressive. Uh, great music, good level design, a really enjoyable uh, side-scrolling platformer. Wings of War, another excellent shoot 'em up to add to the collection. I love this kind of dark fantasy setting this game's got going on. Uh, tons of enemies on screen at once, great music. Uh, Genesis shoot 'em ups, you can't go wrong, and Wings of War is a fantastic entry on the system. Uh, I love these shooters. This game does not disappoint. If you're looking for a shoot 'em up and you like the dark fantasy theme, definitely check out Wings of War. It's a fantastic shoot 'em up. Another couple shoot 'em ups in the system. Uh, once again, very close to getting my shoot 'em up. I think I am done with my shoot 'em ups. I need. Grindstormer. I need Grindstormer and Troubleshooter, and I'm done. That's it. All the shooters I got, I want. Uh, Insector X is a really cool bug insect themed shooter. Uh, sits very nicely next to Biohazard Battle. Uh, great graphics. Uh, this company right here, this uh, Sage's Creation, they didn't make the best games on the system, but you know this one is really enjoyable. Great graphics, cool power ups. I'm really digging the, the insect theme in this one. It's really cool. Uh, really cheesy storyline. But uh, once again, tons of enemies on screen, great graphics, shoot 'em ups, Genesis equals win. Then we have Steel Empire. This is kind of a like steampunk esque shoot 'em up. Uh, you get to play as like a big blimp or a biplane. Uh, once again, another great shooter on the Genesis. Great graphics, good music, tons of enemies on screen, cool power ups. You know what to expect in the Genesis. They didn't really make that many shooters that weren't kick ass. So Steel Empire is a great game. Now this one really surprised me. Generations Lost. Um, I knew nothing about this game. I didn't even know it existed. It reminds me of a game kind of like Flashback or Prince of Persia where it's got that, or Blackthorn, where it's got that certain style of movement. It's not the most precise. Some might even say kind of choppy uh, movement, but it's a really cool game. You've got this awesome like laser plasma whip where you can shoot at enemies and you can also use it as like a grappling hook. Uh, it really works well. The game has some really good graphics. Uh, if you dig games like Out of This World, Flashback, uh, Prince of Persia style movement uh, mixed with some excellent graphics and top-notch uh, production value. Um, the game is really impressive and I, I think it's great. It's very cheap so if you're looking for something like that definitely give this one a chance. Next up we have a couple from Renovation. Um, this was the final game I needed to complete the Valis Trilogy on the Genesis. Uh, this one for some reason is uh, the most expensive of the bunch. This game is getting pretty pricey. Uh, it's a chibi version of Valis 2. Uh, looks great on the system. I love the Ballast games, and I'm very happy to finally have found this one for a really decent price, because it's not easy finding a nice, clean copy like this. I'm really happy with the condition. Uh, insert looks great, the manual, uh, cart, everything looks super clean. I'm really happy to have found a nice, nice, clean version of this one. It's a great game. And then finally, El Viento, and this one is getting rather uh, pricey as well. I've been tracking it on eBay for a while. Uh, I've always had Ernest Evans, I never got to play this one, and I really want to try out the other one that was a, a Mega CD only release, a beat em up. But uh, El Viento is a great action game. Um, wild levels set like in the 19, late 20s, 1930s. 
Uh, really cool style. I love the character. Uh, cinemas and uh, cutscenes are really cool in this. Ernest Evans makes a cameo. Um, so I, I really love the, these games, and Renovation is a winner in my book. El Viento is great. Finally happy to have this one. And I'm happy to report also, I think I'm one title away from finishing my Renovation collection on the Genesis. I think there's an Ease game that I need to get. But uh, really happy to have all the Renovation games. They're fantastic. Moving on to the Sega CD, very much like the Genesis, I've got pretty much everything that I'm searching for on the Sega CD. One of my favorite consoles growing up. Um, one of the things I didn't have was a nice complete in box, uh, really clean copy of Sewer Shark. Now I got this game when I was a kid. I think I've got a picture floating around of me holding up Night Trap and Sewer Shark on Christmas morning. I had no idea what I was in for. Uh, but I seem to have like lost that copy throughout the years and I've got a few like pack-in games that came with the Model 2. But I lost my original complete in box original Sewer Shark and this is one of the ones that I needed to complete my cardboard box collection of early Sega CD games. So I'm really happy to have found a a nice clean copy of this. You don't see these very often anymore. Same with the Sherlock Holmes uh, Consulting Detective Volume 2. I never really had a nice complete uh, clean box of this so uh, these Sherlock Holmes games are, are okay. A lot of trial and error but I, I dig this full motion video stuff and the storylines and the mystery element trying to solve the cases. So this completes my original cardboard box Sega CD collection so I've got all of the early release that were in the cardboard boxes so I guess thumbs up for that one. Nobody else really cares about that shit, but I love it. Next up, we have another renovation title, and this is kind of completing the trilogy of like Time Gal and Road Avenger. Uh, this is another one of the action reaction style games where, kind of like Dragon's Lair, where action unfolds on screen, full motion animation, and you pick the direction in which to go. Uh, this one, for some reason, the video is not quite as clean as Time Gal and Road Avenger. It's kind of pixelated in this, and it's a really short game, but uh, really cool full motion animation. I'm a big fan of these games, so happy to have this. Next up, we have Dungeon Explorer and Power Monger. Uh, Dungeon Explorer, uh, Big Mike came down and visited and picked up a copy of this, and we played it for a little bit, and I had to have a copy, so I managed to track down a nice, complete mint copy here. Uh, this is a really cool game. A nice dungeon crawling, beautiful music, excellent soundtrack, good graphics on the Sega CD. And Power Monger is one of those games that I never played. I always saw it like in the rental stores growing up, but I never did rent it or play it, check it out, and there's a Sega CD version, it's got a few extras in here, it looks like kind of a strategy RPG style game, so I'll give it a try, uh, Power Monger looks pretty cool. Onto the Saturn, very much like the Genesis Sega CD, the Saturn collection is pretty much in the bag in terms of US releases. I did come across a sealed copy of Corpse Killer Graveyard Edition, and I've got Corpse Killer on the 3DO, the Sega CD, but this here is the Graveyard Edition, so there's supposedly a few extras. So I had to pick this up. These full motion video games are a guilty pleasure of mine. And I got myself another Digital Pictures tattoo. So I'm pretty happy about that. This one's a muck. And this is done by Scavenger, who also did a few other games in the Saturn Scorcher. I believe Power Slave. They really worked uh, quite some magic with the 3D engine on the Saturn. And this game is no exception. Just a, a fantastic display of what the Saturn was capable of, given the proper development tools and developer. A uh, really cool 3D action game, a muck, is definitely a must-own, and it's pretty cheap, which is rare for a Saturn game. I found some really great deals on complete Super Nintendo games recently. I know they're not the most um, easy thing to collect for in terms of being cardboard boxes and the price going up on some of these games lately. But here's a nice complete copy of Secret of Evermore, and this is kind of uh, Square's uh, Redhead Stepchild um, RPG. Uh, some people loved it, some people hated it. Uh, I myself Never really got too far into this, so I'm really nice, uh, really happy rather, to have a, a nice, clean, complete copy of this, and I'll definitely finish this one, because I'm such a fan of Square's early work on the Super Nintendo. Great stuff. Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Uh, really happy to have this version. Uh, this is better than the Genesis version, I can say that, without question. Better graphics, better music, uh, and I love this game, like, around Halloween time. Such a fantastic, uh, you know, campy, creepy uh, action game. It's really good stuff. Just a really enjoyable game. Good controls, graphics. I love Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Just a great game. Now here we have Sunset Riders. Uh, once again, on the Super Nintendo, a little bit better visually than the Genesis, although I believe the Genesis version is, is definitely worth owning as well. Don't get me wrong. It's got, I think, some extended levels or stuff that was cut from the Super Nintendo version. I'm not quite sure what the differences are, but there is enough of a difference to warrant owning both versions. Uh, the Super Nintendo version looks great, plays great, great music. I'm really happy to have a nice complete copy of Sunset Riders. 
Next up, we have the best Strider clone that I've played, and it's two players at that. Uh, Run Saber is one of the a few Atlas games that I've seen on the Super Nintendo uh, that's an action game. Uh, really cool stuff here, great gameplay, controls. Uh, this is a really fun game. It's even more fun playing with two players. Uh, not every day you see uh, Run Saber out there in the wild, so I had to pick this up. It's a great condition, uh, nice and complete, a fantastic game. Next up on Super Nintendo, we've got a nice box to complete copy of Super Turrican. And I'm such a big fan of these Turrican games. They're super underrated. They're up there with Contra for me as some of the best running gunners on the market. Uh, fantastic graphics and music. This one's got like Dolby surround sound. It sounds great going through the surround sound system 5.1. Uh, and if you can see there on the cover, this was rated like perfect score by GamePro. It got all hots, all 5.0s. So that's interesting. I, I love the Turrican series. This is probably my second favorite to Mega Turrican on the Genesis. Next up, we've got one of my favorite games on the Super Nintendo. I've had the cart and the manual forever. I managed to come across a really nice box, and I picked it up for a great price. And this completes this copy. Uh, Soul Blazer is one of my favorites, right there with Act Razor 1 and 2. A uh, highly original, great music, gameplay, graphics. I love Enix's work on the Super Nintendo. Soul Blazer is fantastic, one of my favorites. Next up is Biometal on the Super Nintendo, and boy, does this have like a kick ass techno soundtrack. Just completely off the chain. Graphics are excellent, great power ups. This is a really nice shooter on the Super Nintendo for sure. One of the best techno soundtracks I've heard on the system. Excellent stuff. Next up, the PS1. This is one of those items I picked up recently. I got a brand new one in the box. And it's one of those items where I say, what the hell have I been doing all this time? It fits perfectly on the PS1. A beautiful fit. It looks great. Very aesthetically pleasing. And in terms of functionality, second to none. The screen looks fantastic. Uh, everything's bright, detailed. The sound is excellent. Uh, you've got a headphone jack on the back so you can listen to a headphone surround sound. And this is one of those things where, what have I been doing all this time? Why didn't I pick this up? I'm a big handheld gamer, and this kind of turns the PlayStation 1 into a handheld of sorts. Uh, very convenient, uh, fits perfectly. This is an awesome screen. I'm going to be getting tons of use out of this. One of the best peripherals I've ever had the pleasure of owning. If you're into PS1, definitely pick one of these up. It's well worth it. I don't know what I've been doing all this time, but definitely pick one up. Now, I'm having a lot of fun collecting for the PS1 these days. Back when the PS1 was in its heyday, I was a Sega guy. I stuck by my Sega Saturn. The releases were slow and painful, and all my buddies had PlayStation, but I was a Sega loyalist. So a lot of these games I played because my buddies were pretty uh, religious about picking up new games, and we all played them together. I just never owned them personally. So uh, going back and picking these games up is a lot of fun because I remember... Memories of playing them at my buddy's house, all crowded around the TV, you know, just passing the PlayStation controller around. And uh, they're great games. It's a fun system to collect for. I'm getting a pretty good collection of PS1 stuff now. I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Uh, starting things off is the original Wipeout long box, and this has got the, the slip cover on it, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Wipeout games. I love the one on the Vita, the ones in the PSP. I think they're excellent futuristic racing games. Pitch perfect control, great techno music. Uh, the original Wipeout is a fantastic game. And here's a beautiful copy of the original Jumping Flash. Um, I've finished both this and the sequel, and I love these games. They're completely original for the time. Using the 3D perspective, this was something back then that I had never seen before. Using this kind of perspective and almost like these vertigo-inducing giant leaps and watching the rabbit just get closer and closer to the earth, you know, making these huge jumps. Uh, excellent controls and a breath of fresh air for the time. This really showed what 3D gaming could bring new to the table. A fantastic example in a great series. This is Spider, and this is a really cool game. It's kind of a 2.5D platformer where you play as a spider, and he's got like a knife for an arm and like a machine gun. Uh, really cool, uh, very creative, man. This is a great idea to play as a little spider going through levels. Excellent platforming, good controls, a really fun game. This is Vanark, or Vanark, however you want to say it. This is kind of the PlayStation's uh, version of Star Fox. Fantastic visuals. Uh, great gameplay, excellent sound effects, and, and just overall a great game. Highly impressive stuff on the PlayStation. Uh, it kind of mixes like a, a Resident Evil-ish kind of uh, gameplay mode where in the beginning you start off, you're walking around the, the base and stuff, and it's kind of the fixed camera angles, and it's got the storyline, and then you get into the, the uh, space, and then you're firing and shooting and flying around. Van Ark is an excellent game. Treasures of the Deep is one of the early PlayStation games that I played, and I'm all about games with like underwater exploration or anything that's underwater and taking a different gameplay approach. 
Uh, Namco did a fantastic job of this, like exploring underwater shipwrecks and stuff and, and the sharks and everything. This is a fantastic game, pretty original. I'd love to see a new game on the PS4 or Xbox One, you know, flexing that processing muscle of a vast underwater you know, world, man. There's, there's not enough games with water anymore. So Treasure of the Deep is a breath of fresh air in the early PlayStation lineup. I loved this game, and I still really enjoy it. Echo Knight. Uh, this is a pretty creepy game. Uh, it's kind of a long-running series. There's a, a couple more entries on the PS2. And uh, the Echo Knight series is kind of a first-person, uh, a very creepy game, almost like a horror game, I'd say. A really cool storyline, cheesy, but very good. Puzzles, uh, first-person perspective, lots of different endings, unique settings, lots of characters. These are really cool first-person adventure slash horror games. I, I love the Echo Knight series. Galarians, and man, this is one hell of a game. Uh, very kind of controversial storyline material here. Uh, kids being tested on, operated on, given drugs and mind control. It's a Resident Evil style game with you know fixed camera perspective, horror elements, uh, great gameplay. I'm all about these big multi-disc games with the huge storylines, tons of voice acting. Uh, the fixed camera angles, uh, great controversial storyline in this. Uh, I'd like to see more storylines that kind of push the boundaries like, like this game does. A uh, fantastic game here. Now here's a couple games that I'd never even heard of. A couple Dracula slash vampire games. Uh, this one is Dracula the Resurrection, kind of a point and click style game. Uh, very dark, gothic, um, lots of cool puzzles. Really good storyline in this. I'm really enjoying this game a lot more than I thought it would. It's not expensive and for the price I paid Totally got my enjoyment worth out of it. If you like these dark kind of adventure games, definitely check out Dracula the Resurrection. And then we have Countdown Vampires. And this is kind of, I think it's like a budget uh, survival horror game. Uh, very cheesy, don't take it seriously. Uh, the controls aren't the best, but once again, when the cheese factor is this high, and it's a survival horror game, and there's the fixed camera angles, I'm all about it. Uh, I'm really liking this game quite a bit. There are tons of like just gems like this on the PlayStation 1 that... You know, I've been forgotten by time, you know, it, it's a great game and I'm, I'm glad I have it. Here we have Shadow Tower, and I don't think this is like a spin-off of Kingsfield, I, I could be, but it's uh, you know uh, from software and it's got that Kingsfield vibe to it, very dark, desolate, uh, pre-Demon Souls, Dark Souls stuff here, uh, very atmospheric, very dark and dismal, a uh, great first-person adventure game along the lines of Kingsfield, if you're into that kind of game, definitely check out Shadow Tower. Then here's an RPG from Atlas, uh, Thousand Arms. This is one that I saw back in the magazines back in the day, the advertisements for it, uh, saw previews for it. None of my buddies actually own this one, and I never got a chance to try this one out back in the day. So any new RPG I could pick up on the PlayStation is good by me. Looking forward to getting into this and giving it a playthrough. Uh, it looks fantastic. It says you can go on dates and stuff and you know, 3D adventure anime sequences. So I'm all about this kind of stuff. Thousand Arms looks really good. Also on the PlayStation, I went to a local store of mine, and these are fresh from the store. I haven't even taken the stickers off or cleaned the cases up. Uh, Resident Evil Survivor. Never played this one back in the day. Heard mixed things about it, but it's Resident Evil, and it's a first-person light gun game that can't use light guns, so it should be interesting. The City of Lost Children. Oh, man, this movie is quirky and weird as hell, and I love it. And I've really been after this one for quite some time, so I was really happy to see this in my local store. I'm uh, looking forward to giving this a go. And finally, Dracula The Last Sanctuary, which looks very similar in style, I don't know if it's part of a series or not, to Dracula The Resurrection. Uh, they look like point-and-click, uh, real dark, gothic tales, so I'm looking forward to both of these for sure. Moving on to the PS2, I've been on quite a bit of a light gun kick lately, and I found a real nice clean copy of Vampire Knight, this comes with the Gun Con too. Um, a real nice enjoyable light gun game with a vampire theme to it, a horror theme. Uh, the Gun Con 2 is very precise, works really well. Uh, this is a fantastically cheesy game. Uh, I really love light gun games, man. We, that's something I really miss. There's tons of them on the PlayStation Move and PlayStation 3, so I've been, I've been getting my fill on that. But it's always cool to go back and play something like this. It comes in a really cool box set. Uh, Vampire Knight is fantastic. I also picked up the Gun Con 2 compatible uh, Dino Stalker, which is like a spin-off to the Dino Crisis series. Uh, this attempts some new things in terms of movement, being able to move around, and also fire the gun. Uh, once again, a great light gun game if you're looking for something on the PS2. Uh, definitely check out Dino Stalker, it's a great game. Next up, from Atlas, we have Sky Gunner. And this is a really cool shooter. Uh, I didn't pick this up when it first came out, I always was aware of it. Uh, really nice anime graphics, a great graphical art style. 
a really cool storyline and the shooter in this works really different from a lot of shooters. It's got a really cool control scheme where you're actually like viewing things from the front of your ship firing back and there's different control schemes. Some are pretty complex but it's definitely a new way to play a shooter and I really dig the cinematic camera angle in which this game uh, plays out. Uh, really cool stuff, uh, just once again great style, really fun to play, Sky Gunner's fantastic. Next up is Alien Hominid, this is from the guys that brought us Castle Crashers on Xbox Live, that's, that's where I played it anyway. Uh, very similar graphical style, this one's kind of brutally difficult, uh, but once again it's got that same charm as Castle Crashers, a great uh, beat em up, um, two players, uh, enjoyable game. It really channels uh, Castle, you can definitely tell, take one look at this and see where you know Cap Castle Crashers written all over it. Uh, Alien Hominid is fantastic. Here we have the Magna Carta box set, and I remember playing this when it first came out, and there was just so many RPGs in the PS2 at the time. I don't know if I traded it in or got rid of it, I don't know what I did, but uh, this game is, is a fantastic series. I really enjoyed the second one on the Xbox 360, uh, so I wanted to go back and pick this one up. It wasn't expensive, and it comes in this nice uh, box set here, uh, Magna Carta, a really cool game on the PS2. We're looking forward to finishing this one for sure. Ah, Final Fight Streetwise. What can be said about this? Um, it wasn't reviewed well. It wasn't received well by fans. Um, as a beat-em-up, it's okay. Uh, it doesn't do the Final Fight series any favors. Uh, lots of swearing and, and you know trying to be edgy. Uh, it does star Cody, and it's got you know some appearances from some of the classic Final Fight characters. But uh, it, it's merely okay. I, I enjoy this kind of cheesy. Um, dialogue and stuff like that, and, and it, it's an okay game. I, I wouldn't uh, proclaim it to be a, a must-own in the series. The beat-em-ups are just fine, but not bad. And here's Echo Knight Beyond. Uh, this is a fantastic continuation of the Echo Knight series. Very creepy, uh, first-person, atmospheric adventure game. Uh, I love this game. I love the series. And I finished this one back in the day, and for whatever reason, I ended up getting rid of it, so I'm happy to have it again in the collection where it will stay forever. Here we have Bujangai, and this is, I think that's how you say it, Bujangai, the Forsaken City. This is a really cool action, um, very Japanese uh, slash em up in the similar style of like Otogi or Devil May Cry. A really flashy combat system, uh, great combat, great moves and able to chain abilities and different weapons and the storyline is kind of a mess but as an action game in terms of combat, it's a lot of fun to play, and I, I love the flashy moves and, and move sets. So, Bougie Guy for fans of the action slash em up games like Devil May Cry, Shinobi, uh, stuff like that. Shinobi on the PS2, anyway. Yeah, this is a great game. Ha Yes Kuan. Uh, this game is from Software, and it's getting very expensive uh, these days. And I remember picking this up, and I had it. And for whatever reason, I didn't like it that much when I first played it. I, I wasn't. The PS2 was back in my younger days and I was just buying something and trading it or returning it or getting something else and I was just going through games like crazy and I don't think I gave this one its proper due uh, and recently I've been getting quite back into the horror genre and gaming. Uh, I'm always up to turn the lights off, crank the surround sound up and, and get immersed into a nice horror atmosphere and Kuan is definitely a cool game. Playing this again I definitely didn't appreciate it as much as I should have the first time around so really happy to have this one. This one's you know getting pricey man so if you can see a copy if you see a copy somewhere definitely snag it up if it's a good price. Oh Rez heard lots about this game. I love Child of Eden. Never did play this one originally so really happy to have this one. This is one of those abstract shooters with the emphasis on soundtrack and movement and stuff happening on screen uh, you know while you shoot. It, it's really cool. Really artsy game. Uh, Res is a great game. Steambot Chronicles, another underrated Irem Atlas collaboration. Uh, this is an action RPG where you power these little uh, steam uh, trot. I think they're trot something. Little steambots. They're really cool little uh, vehicles you can get in and upgrade the arms, upgrade different parts. Uh, the dialogue is like a choose your own adventure thing where you can pick your responses and the storyline changes and different endings and multiple uh, paths depending on the responses you choose. Uh, so this is really cool. It's got a really kind of confusing control scheme. But other than that, I love the graphical style. I love the, the way the game plays and the little trots you can customize. A fantastic game. And finally, Mr. Mosquito. A very Japanese quirky game where you play as a mosquito flying around trying to uh, bite this family. Uh, it's, it pretty much sums it up. It's oddball. It's very Japanese, strange. The gameplay mechanics are okay. It's definitely something unique and uh, I enjoy it for that. Next up, we've got some GameCube love. Uh, first off is Ikaruga, and you gotta love this now legendary tagline, our frothing demand for this game increases. 
poetically put from IGN. And this is a fantastic shooter that deserves all the praise that it gets. Uh, some really cool revolutionary features going on inside of this. If you like shoot 'em ups that try something new, you gotta check out Ikaruga. All the stuff you've heard is true. It's a fantastic shoot 'em up. Metal Gear Solid: The Twin Snakes. My son Zach is on a Metal Gear kick. Uh, he's finished damn near every game in this series, working on five. And this is uh, Metal Gear Solid One with gameplay elements from Metal Gear Solid Two, uh, an exclusive to the GameCube by Silicon Knights. A really cool spin on a classic game. Chibi Robo. This is one that I did not play back in the day. Um, I did pick up the Ziplash or whatever for the 3DS. It's an okay game and I wanted to see uh, the roots of the series so I went ahead and, and found a copy for a decent price. This game's getting kind of pricey as well. Uh, so far it's really bright, colorful and uh, it's kind of a breath of fresh air for sure. Lost Kingdoms 1 and 2. Uh, RPGs from software. I never did play these, and there's not a lot of options as far as RPGs in the GameCube. So I was happy to pick these up, they're not expensive, and uh, I'll give them a go in the future for sure, because I've finished Skies of Arcadia Legends on the GameCube, and I have also finished Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. So outside of those, there's really not a whole lot of RPGs to play in the GameCube, so happy to have Lost Kingdom 1 and 2. Moving on to the PlayStation Vita, got a lot of love on the Vita this month. There's some great games coming out through the end of the year. Uh, first up here we have the limited edition of Corpse Party Blood Drive. Uh, this is a really cool special edition. It's got a great art book, uh, some soundtracks, and just overall the package is great. Uh, real shiny, embossed. Uh, Corpse Party was a great game on the PSP. I'm really happy to have this on the Vita. It looks great. Uh, over the top with the violence and bloodshed, and you've got these kind of cute, almost chibi style graphics. It's such a stark contrast to the brutal violence that goes on in the the morose tone of the game. Uh, a fantastic game. Very happy to have this on Vita. This is a great entry. If you're a fan of straight up visual novels, the Vita has got you covered. Code Realized Guardian. We've got Norn 9, which I just picked up. I haven't had much of a chance to play this one yet. I'm still finishing up uh, Code Realized Guardian. And then also uh, Stein's Gate. Now I love reading books and playing these is like reading a good book with beautiful music going on in the background and excellent visuals to accompany the action. Uh, this one, uh, Steins Gate, is like a science fiction, time traveling uh, tale, really in-depth and, and complex, great visual style. Uh, Code Realize is probably my favorite of the bunch so far, granted I haven't played much of Nora 9 yet, but this uses characters like um, uh, Dr. Frankenstein, Van Helsing, uh, set in like a steampunk world where a woman is been trapped alone in this house, abandoned by her father, been told she's a monster. She's got a halogrium holo in her chest, which is like poison. Everything she touches, it melts. So she's been told she was a monster and she can't go near anyone. And this government is trying to kidnap her and you swoop in and save her. And you are trying to find out how to get this gem that's embedded in her chest out. It's just an amazing game, great story. I was hooked from the start, good stuff. Nor 9, another straight up visual novel. I don't know much about this, but I do love the art style. There's multiple endings, choices to make, and some great music. So I'm looking forward to finishing up Code Realize Guardian and popping this in and getting into this. Lost Dimension. This is a game that I'm just about wrapped up with. A fantastic RPG where the kick in this one is that you're is stuck in this tower by a guy named The End. And you must go through these different floors, but there's a traitor in your party. And every time you get to a new level or floor of the tower, you must kill one of your comrades by labeling him as a traitor. So, you know, a part visual novel where you talk, find out people's motives, get to know them, find out who's the traitor. And every floor you move up, you must kill someone. So that, I thought that was a really cool twist. A uh, really cool, kind of gut-wrenching, uh, you know, you get attached to these characters and having to kill one off is just kind of brutal, man. So... This is a fantastic game. Combat is like Valkyria Chronicles, if anyone's played that. Excellent RPG, Lost Dimension. Tales of Arts are, uh, I believe, a GameStop exclusive. You guys know me in the Tales series. I'm completely in love with this series, and this game is great as well. Fantastic visuals on the Vita. Battle system is at the top of the class. I really enjoy Tales of Heart. This is a fantastic game. Story might not be as strong as some of the other entries, but I'm really enjoying it. It's great to have a Tales RPG on the go on that high-res screen. Love it. And finally, Dungeon Travelers 2. Now, I am kind of burnt out on Dungeon Crawlers, but this one is an exception. Excellent visuals, and the monsters in this game are like scantily clad, beautiful women. Those are the monsters. That's what you're fighting. Uh, I haven't put too much time into it. I'm looking forward to getting back into this and finishing it because of 
This, this style is just so out of control, seeing these like half-naked, beautiful women supposed to be monsters. So, a uh, great first-person combat. And I must say, the Vita is just cranking out RPG after RPG after visual novel after visual novel. Still a lot more to come out, so Sony may be you know, not focusing or supporting the Vita. I can care less. we got Trails in the Sky coming. Uh, Vita is a fantastic machine. I'm absolutely loving it to death. Some good games are really hitting for the PlayStation 4. I picked up The Order. This is the Steel Book from the Limited Edition. It was on a flash sale on Amazon a while back for like $55 uh, shipped. And the Special Edition is fantastic. It's got an awesome statue. Uh, I like The Order, you know. I was really anticipating it and then the reviews started coming in. People were shitting on it, but visually fantastic. I like the storyline. Sure, it's kind of a by the numbers, by the book, third person shooter, but you know, the statue is great. Uh, and I'm really enjoying the game. A great limited edition. God of War remaster. I'm a huge fan of God of War. I'm a sucker for remasters. This is down to 20 bucks now, so I had to pick it up. Dragon Quest Heroes. Uh, once again, I picked up the collector's edition for this. Uh, kind of pricey for what you get, really. You get like a lanyard and a few other things. And it comes in a nice collector's box. I'm sure you guys have seen it. But I really enjoy Dynasty Warriors, 99 Night style of games. So uh, this is great. Uh, just like Hyrule Warriors, a fantastic uh, spinoff. Tales of Zestaria, man, I'm loving this game. This is one of those RPGs that just pulled me in right from the beginning, and I'm completely hooked. Once again, I got the collector's edition for this. Uh, what a masterful collector's edition. We've got little chibi figures like from Symphonia, Steelbook, a movie, uh, all kinds of great stuff. Soundtracks, art books. This collector's edition is so worth it, and the game is fantastic. Transformers Devastation, a love letter from the 80s cartoon. Uh, Platinum Games, love the battle system, love the graphical style, I love this game period, a fantastic for fans of Transformers, this is a no-brainer, pick this one up. On the PS4, also got Destiny the Taken King, I actually picked up the white limited edition PlayStation 4 console bundle, and it came with a physical copy, uh, not for resale, but a physical copy nonetheless. And Destiny is a game that is really coming into its own, uh, the, fan, the Taken King is just an excellent uh, add-on. Uh, the more and more I play this game, the more I, I just see, I see now Bungie's vision because this game is getting just amazing. Really happy to have this one. This is Zack's game, Metal Gear The Phantom Pain. Uh, he really likes it. Um, there's some things he doesn't like. I've been watching him play through the whole thing. Metal Gear is not my cup of tea, but I can appreciate it, and this is a pretty impressive entry for sure. Not my favorite in this series, but a damn fine game nonetheless. On the Xbox One, one lone pickup, the new Assassin's Creed. A uh, huge fan of Assassin's Creed. I'll get all the games. And um, this one is great. I love the grappling hook. Uh, I liked last year's Unity as well. Uh, Syndicate is a, an amazing game. You know, people shit on the Assassin's Creed games, but those people that shit on them, I guarantee haven't played every one and completed them. Uh, I love the series of death. I'd like to see. Uh, a kind of a more radical change for the next entry if they're going to keep pumping them out. You know, really change up the setting or, or do something a little different. But uh, it's not growing stale for me yet. I love Assassin's Creed. Moving on to the 3DS. Uh, finally, we got the smaller new 3DS with the faceplates. And I own the Majora's Mask XL. But I really wanted to get this smaller one due to the screen size, the resolution, being much sharper. And I like the faceplates. What can I say? So I'm really enjoying this smaller version, to be honest. I like the just the tighter look of the graphics and the resolution, just razor-sharp detail. I'm loving the colored buttons, and I love the faceplate, so I'm really happy to have... And I'm really glad that Nintendo chose to bring the smaller unit over to America. A great choice, and I really like it. Also picked up the Happy Home Designer bundle. Uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf was a surprise hit for me. I played the first one on the GameCube, and I just couldn't get into it for whatever reason. New Leaf completely hooked me, over 200 hours. I love being the mayor, designing the town, sidewalks, public works, fashion checks. So this was right up my alley. One of my favorite things to do is I'm constantly messing with my house and buying new furniture and rearranging things. Probably has something to do with my OCD. I'm constantly rearranging the game room as well. But this isn't in-depth as I would like it would be. Uh, some of the new mechanics work for the better in terms of arranging furniture and being able to squeeze through tight spots. So I hope that's incorporated into the new Animal Crossing game. But the problem I have with this, the one, the one flaw, the, the AR cards are cool, everything is cool. No matter what you do, you can spend an hour designing a brilliant, uh, intricate room or slop something together in two seconds and the villagers are going to love it no matter what. There's no penalty for doing a shit job. I would like to have seen some penalty or some harsher consequences, but other than that, 
Really enjoyable game. Chibi Robo Ziplash. You know, I was kind of disappointed by this. It comes with the amiibo. But the problem with this game is the strange level progression, and it, overall, it's just... It's a solid platformer with solid mechanics. Just something about it just doesn't do it for me. I don't know. It's just kind of repetitious. I, I enjoy the game. I don't regret buying it. But something just feels off. I, I can't quite put my finger on it. It's a fun game, but it's not amazing. And Nintendo makes amazing games, so that's why it's a little off for me. Pleasantly Surprised by Legend of Legacy. I didn't know it came in this nice box set. I love RPGs. Uh, the Saga Frontier games are some of the ones that I really want to get into. I haven't played them. But uh, this game looked right up my alley, and there's a definite lack of RPGs in the 3DS in terms of being a standard RPG. Uh, graphics look amazing. I love the pop-in style. Great use of color. Uh, good battle system. Definitely looking forward to finishing this one. It's a nice little package here. And finally, Yokai Watch. Uh, level 5. I'm not into Pokemon for whatever reason. I've never really tried it out, but this really seemed interesting to me. Kind of the more dark nature of the storyline in terms of these yokai are troubled spirits and there's more things going on in this where like you know they're making your parents fight or they're causing car accidents it's, it's kind of a, a mature approach wrapped in like a kitty exterior and I love level 5 so I had to give this one a go Lord of Magna Made in Heaven this is a nice box set from uh, Xseed and I'm enjoying this game it's not like blowing me away amazing but the storyline is solid the writing is solid uh, your character is surrounded by beautiful women in the inn that he runs and you can kind of pay attention to certain characters more than others and change the dialogue according to who you're paying attention to more. The battle system is pretty refreshing. It's kind of like a game of bowling where you knock the enemy over and he knocks into the enemies behind him creating like a domino effect, uh, dealing massive damage. A uh, pretty cool storyline, good music. I'm enjoying this one. One game on the Wii to speak of, this is Juon the Grudge Haunted House Simulator. I'm a sucker for horror games and this one is getting pretty sought after. I, I haven't paid attention to reviews or anything, but uh, it seems pretty creepy, and I'm looking forward to turning the lights off, cranking the surround sound up, and getting into this one. Finally, a couple on the Wii U. Yoshi's Woolly World. Adorable, charming. Been waiting for this game for a while. It's not disappointing me. Just uh, so cute to look at. I got the limited edition with the Yarn Yoshi. Just adorable. Uh, Kirby. You know, this game is cool. I really wish I could focus more on the beautiful HD screen than staring at the gamepad. I think this was better suited for like a handheld um, touchscreen. But overall, it's still Kirby. It's still a fun game to play. So the Wii U is, is you know, it's, it's keeping me busy with, with good games. I like Splatoon. I'm looking forward to Star Fox and a few others coming out for it. So, uh, yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed going over some of the stuff I've picked up recently. I want to thank you guys for sticking with the channel. I know I'm not consistent in terms of putting out videos, but... I'm not going to make any promises, but I'm going to be more consistent. I will. So, hope you guys stay tuned for more content. I love doing this. I'm not going anywhere. Sometimes it takes me a while, but I'm really going to try to stay focused here and get some stuff rolling for you guys. Thank you for watching. As always, Games of War is nothing without you.